Top 25 Analytics Engineer Interview Questions and Answers Preparing for an analytics engineer interview can be challenging, especially with the wide range of technical and business-focused questions involved. This guide covers the top 25 most frequently asked analytics engineer interview questions along with concise 100-word answers to help you build confidence, demonstrate expertise, and stand out to recruiters and hiring managers. 1. What is the role of an analytics engineer? An analytics engineer bridges the gap between data engineering and data analysis. They build and maintain data pipelines, transform raw data into accessible formats, and ensure reliable, documented datasets for analysts and business teams. They collaborate across departments, often using tools like DBT, SQL, and cloud platforms to create scalable and governed data infrastructure that supports decision making. This role demands a strong understanding of both the technical architecture and the business logic behind data requirements. Analytics engineers also often enforce best practices in data modeling, version control, and testing to maintain data quality and drive business performance through insights. 2. How is an analytics engineer different from a data analyst or data engineer? An analytics engineer sits between a data analyst and a data engineer. Data engineers focus on building infrastructure and data pipelines, while data analysts interpret data to generate insights. Analytics engineers transform raw data into clean, documented datasets that analysts use. They use engineering principles like version control, testing, and modular coding, often via DBT or SQL, to create efficient, reusable data models. Unlike traditional data engineers, they're closer to business logic. Unlike analysts, they write more production-grade code. Their role ensures data is accurate, reliable, and usable for downstream analytics, empowering organizations to scale data operations with quality and consistency. 3. What tools and technologies do you commonly use? I commonly use SQL, DBT, Data Build Tool, and Git for data modeling, transformation, and version control. Cloud data warehouses like Snowflake, BigQuery, or Redshift are essential for querying and processing large datasets. I also use Airflow for orchestrating workflows and Tableau or Looker for testing data outputs through visualizations. Occasionally, Python is used for data wrangling or automation. I also emphasize data documentation using tools like DBT Docs and ensure strong collaboration with stakeholders via platforms like Jira or Slack. These tools help manage data pipelines, maintain data quality, and support self-service analytics across the organization. 4. What is DBT and why is it important? DBT, Data Build Tool, is an open-source command-line tool that enables data analysts and engineers to transform data in their warehouses more efficiently. It supports modular, version-controlled, testable SQL transformations. DBT promotes best practices like code reuse, documentation, and testing. Its importance lies in improving transparency, data quality, and maintainability of SQL models. It allows teams to treat data transformation as software engineering bringing agility and reproducibility to the analytics pipeline. With DBT, teams can confidently build reliable data models that power dashboards, reports, and machine learning pipelines, all while tracking lineage and ensuring data integrity through built-in validations. 5. What is data modeling and why is it important? Data modeling is the process of designing structured and optimized representations of data for analytical use. It includes defining relationships, keys, constraints, and data types across datasets. Effective data modeling ensures consistency, scalability, and performance in querying. For analytics engineers, it's critical to build clear, reusable models that serve various departments. Proper data modeling reduces redundancy, improves documentation, and helps stakeholders understand data sources. Techniques like star schema or snowflake schema make data more accessible for reporting. Ultimately, modeling transforms raw, complex data into clean, organized layers allowing analysts to trust the data and make accurate, timely decisions. 6. How do you ensure data quality? To ensure data quality, I implement testing, monitoring, and validation processes. In DBT, I define tests for uniqueness, null values, relationships, and accepted values. I set up scheduled checks through tools like Airflow or Great Expectations and monitor anomalies in key metrics. Data is version controlled using Git to track changes. I work closely with stakeholders to validate business logic and ensure models match expectations. Documentation is maintained and updated regularly. Alerting systems notify stakeholders when issues arise. By combining automation, collaboration, and continuous validation, I create a reliable data ecosystem that minimizes the risk of incorrect insights or decisions. 7. Explain the modern data stack. The modern data stack refers to a suite of cloud-native tools used to collect, store, transform, and analyze data. 
It typically includes data ingestion tools, Fivetran, Stitch, Cloud Data Warehouses, Snowflake, BigQuery, Redshift, Transformation Tools, DBT, Orchestration Tools, Airflow, Prefect, and Buy Tools, Tableau, Looker, Power Buy. These tools are modular, scalable, and easy to integrate, offering faster time to insight and easier maintenance than legacy systems. Analytics engineers leverage this stack to centralize data, automate pipelines, enforce quality, and empower data teams. Its flexibility and developer-friendly approach allow businesses to scale analytics operations efficiently and adapt quickly to changing needs. 8. What are CTEs in SQL and why are they useful? Common table expressions, CTES, in SQL are temporary result sets defined within a query using the with clause. They make SQL queries more readable, modular, and maintainable, especially when working with complex logic. CTES allow developers to break down long queries into manageable parts, use recursion, or reuse intermediate results. For analytics engineers, they are useful in data modeling, building layered transformations, and debugging. Using CTES encourages clean, organized SQL that's easier for teams to review and maintain. While not always the most performant choice compared to subqueries, their clarity and flexibility often outweigh performance considerations in analytical workflows. 9. What is the difference between INNERJOIN and LEFTJOIN? An inner join returns only records that have matching values in both tables, filtering out non-matching rows. In contrast, a left join returns all records from the left, first, table and the matched records from the right, second, table. If no match is found, NULLS are returned for right side columns. Analytics engineers use INNERJOINS for focused datasets and left JOINS when maintaining completeness or merging optional data. Understanding when to use each is critical for preserving data accuracy and ensuring expected outputs, especially when modeling or transforming data that drives dashboards or business critical analytics. 10. What's the purpose of data lineage? Data lineage refers to tracking the origin movement, and transformation of data from source to final destination. It helps analytics engineers understand dependencies, validate logic, debug issues, and maintain trust in data pipelines. Tools like DBT or DataHub visualize lineage, showing how data flows between tables, models, and reports. This transparency aids impact analysis, understanding how change in one dataset affects downstream elements. It also supports auditing, compliance, and governance by offering traceability. Lineage ensures teams can confidently evolve data models and processes without introducing errors, while also onboarding new team members quickly by revealing how the data ecosystem functions. 11. How do you manage version control for analytics code? I use Git for version control of SQL and DBT code, organizing models, macros, and documentation in repositories. Each change is made through feature branches and reviewed via pull requests to ensure peer validation and maintain code quality. Commit messages are clear and descriptive, enabling easy tracking of changes. Version control allows rollback, collaboration, and integration with CI, CD workflows for automated testing. It ensures transparency, accountability, and reproducibility in analytics projects. By treating analytics code like software code, we create a collaborative, scalable development environment that reduces bugs, simplifies deployment, and promotes continuous improvement of the analytics stack. 12. What is a star schema? A star schema is a data modeling design where a central fact table connects to multiple dimension tables. The fact table holds quantitative data like sales or transactions, while dimensions store descriptive attributes like customer, product, or time. This structure is simple, intuitive, and optimized for fast querying in buy tools. It reduces complexity for end users and enhances performance in OLAP systems. Analytics engineers use star schemas to organize data in a way that supports consistent and scalable reporting. The star schema improves readability, minimizes joins, and allows stakeholders to explore data through clear and well-labeled relationships. 13. Describe a time you solved a data pipeline issue. In a previous role, I noticed daily reports were delayed due to a broken data pipeline. After investigating logs, I discovered a schema change in a source system had caused a failure in downstream transformations. I quickly patched the DBT model, added schema validation tests, and reprocessed historical data. To prevent recurrence, I introduced automated schema change alerts and worked with engineering to establish a more stable source structure. This proactive response not only restored timely reporting but also improved our pipeline's resilience. The incident underscored the importance of observability and communication across teams in managing reliable data workflows. 14. What metrics would you track to measure pipeline performance? Q1 
Key metrics to monitor pipeline performance include data freshness, latency, completeness, success, failure rates, job duration, and volume anomalies. I track these using monitoring tools like Airflow, Monte Carlo, or custom dashboards. Alerts are set up for delayed runs or unusual patterns. I also measure model test pass rates in DBT and track schema drift. These metrics help identify inefficiencies, ensure timely delivery, and maintain trust in data products. By analyzing trends in these KPIs, I can proactively optimize performance, reduce costs, and ensure pipelines meet service level expectations for both internal stakeholders and business critical applications. 15. What are some common data transformation challenges? Common challenges include inconsistent source formats, null values, schema changes, time zone mismatches, and evolving business logic. Data duplication and grain mismatches can cause logic errors. Integrating disparate sources often requires careful deduplication and normalization. Analytics engineers also face performance bottlenecks in complex transformations. Lack of documentation and stakeholder alignment can further complicate transformations. To manage these, I use modular SQL, thorough testing, and incremental models. I communicate with stakeholders regularly to validate assumptions and ensure transformations reflect current business needs. Proactive documentation and monitoring help address these challenges early, ensuring robust, reliable, and accurate transformation pipelines. 16. What is incremental modeling in DBT and why is it useful? Incremental modeling in DBT allows you to update only new or changed data in your models, rather than rebuilding the entire table each time. This significantly reduces processing time and warehouse costs, especially for large datasets. It's achieved using the as underscore incremental, macro and managing logic for inserts and updates. Incremental models are ideal for logs, event tables, or any dataset with a clear timestamp or unique ID. They enhance performance and scalability while maintaining data accuracy. However, careful testing is required to handle edge cases. Overall, incremental models optimize resource usage without compromising the reliability of transformed data. 17. How do you collaborate with stakeholders in your role? I actively communicate with stakeholders to gather data requirements, validate business logic, and ensure models align with their needs. I run regular check-ins, demo sessions, and maintain clear documentation of models and metrics definitions. Tools like Jira, Confluence, and Slack help manage feedback loops and track progress. I also create sandbox datasets for user acceptance testing before full deployment. By involving stakeholders early and often, I ensure the final outputs meet expectations and support decision-making. This collaboration fosters trust, increases adoption of data tools, and encourages a data-driven culture across departments. My goal is always shared understanding and actionable insights. 18. How do you approach data governance and compliance? I follow best practices like role-based access control, data classification, and documentation to support governance. Sensitive data is encrypted, masked, or tokenized where needed. I ensure compliance with frameworks like GDPR or HIPAA through data retention policies and audit trails. DBT helps enforce naming conventions and model documentation. I also implement data lineage tracking to ensure traceability. Regular audits and stakeholder reviews help ensure policies are followed. Collaboration with legal, security, and data governance teams ensures company-wide standards are respected. Governance is not just a technical concern, it's about protecting data, ensuring quality, and maintaining trust across the organization. 19. What's the difference between a fact table and a dimension table? A fact table stores measurable, quantitative data such as sales, revenue, or clicks, and typically includes foreign keys linking to dimension tables. It represents business events or transactions. A dimension table, on the other hand, contains descriptive attributes such as customer names, product categories, or time periods. In a star schema, the fact table is central and surrounded by related dimension tables. Fact tables answer, what happened, while dimension tables answer, who, what, when, and where. This separation improves query performance and makes analytical models more intuitive for end users. 20. Explain slowly changing dimensions, SCD. Slowly changing dimensions are attributes in dimension tables that change over time but not frequently. There are different types. Type 1. Override old data with new, no history. Type 2. Add a new row to preserve history. Type 3. Track limited history in separate columns. Analytics engineers often use type 2 for accurate historical analysis. For example, if a customer changes their address, type 2 maintains both old and new records. Proper handling of SCDS ensures accurate trend analysis, reporting consistency, and data integrity. Implementation requires thoughtful design, especially regarding primary keys and effective date tracking.
21. How do you optimize SQL queries for performance? To optimize SQL queries, I analyze execution plans, minimize joins on large datasets, and use selective filtering early in the query. I avoid subqueries when possible, leverage indexed columns, and use limit in development to test quickly. I favor CTES or temporary tables for modularity but test performance. Partitioning and clustering in warehouses like BigQuery or Snowflake also improve scan efficiency. I reduce data processed by projecting only necessary columns. Proper denormalization and pre-aggregated models can also enhance performance. Regular performance audits and collaboration with data engineering teams ensure queries run efficiently at scale without sacrificing clarity or maintainability. 22. How do you handle schema changes in upstream data sources? I monitor schema changes using data observability tools or by scripting automated schema validation checks. When a schema change is detected, like a missing column or data type mismatch, I assess its impact through data lineage. I use DBT tests to identify downstream breakage. Version control enables rollback if needed. I also communicate with source teams to understand changes and prevent unannounced updates. For fragile pipelines, I design flexible models with dynamic schema handling. Documentation is updated accordingly. Proactively managing schema changes ensures continued reliability of data products and avoids disrupting business critical reporting or analysis processes. 23. What makes a good data model in analytics engineering? A good data model is reliable, intuitive, scalable, and maintainable. It adheres to naming conventions, uses consistent logic, and is well documented. It reflects business rules clearly and reduces duplication across transformations. Modular SQL with reusable CTES or macros enhances maintainability. Testing for nulls, uniqueness, and integrity ensures reliability. Incremental loading or partitioning improves performance. Good models are also version controlled and traceable through data lineage. A balance between normalization and denormalization ensures both flexibility and performance. Ultimately, a good data model empowers analysts to extract insights easily and accurately while minimizing confusion, bugs, and time spent on troubleshooting. 24. How do you stay updated with analytics engineering trends? I stay updated by following industry blogs, e.g., DBT Labs, Fishtown Analytics, newsletters, locally optimistic, analytics engineering roundup, and communities like DBT Slack or Reddit's R Data Engineering. I attend webinars, listen to data podcasts, and take part in conferences like Coalesce. GitHub activity and change logs help track tool updates. I also experiment with new tools in sandbox environments and share learnings with peers. Continuous learning is crucial, as the modern data stack evolves rapidly. Staying current helps me recommend better architectures, improve team practices, and build future-proof, efficient, and scalable data solutions that align with the latest engineering best practices. 25. Why do you want to work as an analytics engineer at our company? I'm excited about the opportunity to contribute to your company because of its data-driven culture and emphasis on innovation. I admire how you use analytics to drive impactful decisions and improve customer experiences. With my expertise in SQL, DBT, and data modeling, I can help build scalable and trustworthy datasets that empower teams. I'm drawn to the collaborative environment and the opportunity to solve complex data challenges. I'm also excited to learn from your experienced team and contribute to evolving your analytics infrastructure. This role aligns with my passion for bridging technical data work with strategic business insights. Mastering these 25 analytics engineer interview questions will give you a strong edge in your job search. Practice answering confidently, tailor responses to the role you're applying for, and stay current with tools and trends to position yourself as a standout candidate.